come to office hour 18 and then as usual we are recording the session so that those who miss the live one they can always watch the recording and uh, i'm happy that a lot of people are already joined so it looks like the broadcast i did is working so we have a special guest all the way from from accra ghana and the interesting thing is how i found him is via his work so if you're on LinkedIn, I'm sure you'll have come across this part here in report. You know all those financial models that you see that they look like you know out of this world. They look like you know, maybe an entire department. <laughs> department you know, so that's how I got to know about him. Like I've been seeing those is amazing work. I'm like, oh, we need to try and bring him on our session so people can learn from him. As you can see on the screen, his name is Thomas Festos. And um, he, well, he was very conservative in his profile, as you say, if some of you have seen. <laughs> I tell you, he's, he's more than what he put in his profile. He's a Microsoft, <laughs> uh, Microsoft <laughs> analyst, analyst associate, he's a Microsoft certified Excel expert. He's also a chartered accountant. Uh, I know he works with, with Zenit Bank. There's a lot more to him than what he puts in his profile, but I know that we are all here to learn from him. So uh, I'm going to hand over to him. So Thomas, the stage is yours. Thank you for honoring us for present and time and willing to share your knowledge with us. So yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Good. Good evening, guys. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to be with you today. I'm really happy to be here. To talk, to talk to you about Power BI and other things. So first, I want to thank Michael for reaching out to me with this opportunity. I have also been seeing him on LinkedIn and then um, YouTube <clears throat> with some of his videos. And I must say that I have learned a lot from Michael. I remember when I was on campus, when I was starting off with Excel, I found most of his videos on YouTube, which I learned so much from those videos. So. I want to thank him for that opportunity to always want to share his knowledge and also want to bring people on board to also share their knowledge with other users. So I'm happy to be here. So today, as you guys are aware, we are going to <clears throat> talk about how we can improve our user experience using Power BI buttons. So most of us, we have, we might have used buttons before, others too. That may be the first time you are hearing about Power BI buttons, and they are really powerful. That when you use it in your report, you give your users the experience to be able to interact with your report. In that case, they get to have more power and control over the reports. So just like having an app on your phone, you see that the app comes with a lot of interactivity and gives you that flexibility to pick up or even filter or do so many things on your own instead of everything being configured for you automatically. But when you are using buttons on your report, you give your users that opportunity. So let me try to share my screen with you, then we can get started. Um, While you're sharing your screen, if you have any questions, remember that you can always drop your questions in the chat box so that I can compile them and give them whenever we get to the question. Okay. okay. So that's great. So as I mentioned to you all, you guys are away. Today we are going to focus on... Uh, Michael, can you see my screen? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, great. So today is on how we can improve our user experience using Power BI buttons. So as I mentioned, some of us, we might have used Power BI buttons before. Others, maybe this will be the first time we are going to experience Power BI buttons. For me, I use mostly on my reporting because it gives me the opportunity to give my users some control over the report okay so now michael has already spoken about me so i'm a certified microsoft data analyst and then a certified microsoft trainer as well and i'm also a certified microsoft excel expert then apart from that professionally i'm a chartered accountant with sema and then institute of chartered accountant ghana and apart from that, I'm also the lead trainer at Fessman School, where we provide training. Michael is already aware of that. So we provide training in data analytics, financial modeling, and other things that you can do with Power BI, R, Python, and other data analytics software or packages. 
And apart from that, I'm also a financial analyst with one of the leading financial institutions in Ghana. So I'll go straight into the, the section. So we are looking at Power BI buttons. So here we are seeing that Power BI buttons gives you the opportunity to provide engaging and amazing user experience for your users as you are giving them the opportunity to hover, click and further interact with your Power BI content. So after developing your Power BI report, you might want to give your users the opportunity to be able to assess the report in some interactive way. So instead of limiting everything into one page where the users are going to be exposed to just one thing, we are using the button to provide them with opportunity to click something or maybe hover their mouse and they'll be able to get additional information rather than all those things that they can get from the actual report itself. And that's where the buttons come in. So the buttons are really powerful. So before we go into the demo, I want there are some few things that you need to know about Power BI buttons. So now using the Power BI buttons, um, we, we have basically, we have three main states. We have the default state and then on hover and then on press. And this is what gives the power of the buttons. It's not like the other visuals or other artifacts that we have in Power BI. But when you have the Power BI buttons, you have so many ways you can customize the button to be able to show what the users need to show or the users will have access to when the button is in the default state. And then you can also customize it to show something or maybe perform some <laughs> actions when the users hover their mouse over those buttons. And then when it's on press, you can also give your users the opportunity to look at other things or specific actions when they press your button on the Power BI report. Now within the Power BI button, these are some of the things that you can customize when you are looking at the three main states. So when you are in the default on hover or when you press your button, you can customize the button test, the button that should be shown, the test that should be shown on the button when your users hover their mouse or when it's in the default state. Then you can also customize the icon that should be shown when your users click on hover or when they press your button. You can also specify the outline as well as the fill. So we are going to look at how you can all use all these things within our Power BI report to give our users the opportunity to get more engaging and better experience. And with Power BI button, you can use it to do so many things. And these are some of the functions or some of the actions that you can use Power BI button to do. You can use it in Drew Truths. You can use it to back options. You can also use it in Bookmark. Then you can also use it in Page Navigation. And most of the time, that's what's most users use their button to do in cases of page navigation. Then you can also use it to activate the Q&A visual, which your users will be able to query the data, they'll be able to filter the data, or they'll be able to get insight using their natural language. Then you also have the web URL, which you can also use the button to direct your users to a particular website or a particular web address. So you see those ones that are having the, uh, the blue color, these are the things that we are going to cover in this demo. So I'm not going to cover drill truths. I'm not going to cover Q&A or web URL. We are going to look at how we can use the buttons to configure bookmarks and how we can use it in page navigations and how we can use it to back our users or give our users the opportunity to go back to the previous page that they were in before they came to the current page. Then we also look at other things um, in relation to all those, those things. Okay, so now let me share my Power BI screen and then we can move on into the demo. So let me go to Power BI. Okay, but before then, let me come in here. Okay, so this, this is a report that I developed on uh, financial statement analysis, and I've already published it. So I'm going to show you some of these uh, applications of the, the buttons so that you'll be able to experience how it works. So this is the income statement. So those of us who have accounting background, so this is not going to be solely about accounting, but just a demo. So here you can see a financial report here. So those of us who have accounting background, You'll be able to read meaning into what you are seeing here. So there's actually an income statement. Now within the complete statement, uh, income state, uh, the complete financial statement, you have income statement, balance sheet, cash flows, and other things. But within this report, I have just three of these financials. I have the income statement, balance sheet, and then the cash flow statements. So here, instead of using pages, okay, the default pages where my users can move to other pages, 
I want you to make it uh, make it very easy for them to be able to navigate to the various pages. So here I have used these buttons here. So by default, this is showing you the income statement. So this is not activated. But when you hover your mouse over the balance sheet, you can see that the background is formatted with black. This tells you that you can click on this. And then if you take a look at this, this is the cash flows. It also directs you to the cash flow statement. And then we also have this. So here, if my users want to move into the balance sheet, they can click here and they move straight to the balance sheet. And when they come to the balance sheet, they move want to move back to the income statement. They can click on this and then it will send them back to the income statement. If they want to look at the cash flows, they can also use this to move into the cash flow statement. And all this is by the power of a button. So here I move to balance sheets here. And then apart from the page navigations, when you look at this side, this income statement here is showing the annual reports. So in this case, you are seeing the performance by year. If the users want to look at it in terms of quarters, our users can click on the quarter here and they'll be able to see the thing in quarter. If maybe they are at the quarter stage and they want to look at the annual performance or on yearly basis, they can click on this and they will switch the yearly basis. And then when maybe they apply some filters to this report, uh, I want them to be able to clear all the filters if they want to clear the, the filters. So imagine they have applied maybe like two filters. If they want to clear everything, they have to click here. And they also have to click here to be able to clear off all the filters. Now I want them to be able to clear the filters at once. So here I have a button here which is able to reset everything back to the default state. So here if maybe they pick 2019 and they may pick quarter two here. If they click on this, this will drive them back to the default state. So they have been able to clear all the filters and now they can see the original report. Now apart from that, let's move on to the balance sheet. So here, when they come to the balance sheet, um, no, the income statement. Now within the income statement, I have a button here, which is showing the various key performance indicators. So here we have our net profit margin, operating profit margin, and then interest cover. Now you can see that now it's showing the percentage or the net profit margin based on my selection. So maybe if I pick 2020, this is going to give me my net profit margin for 2020. Now, apart from that, I want my users to be able to get more experience with that KPI. So when they hover their mouse over it, it also gives them the performance for the prior period. So it means that in 2019, this was our net profit margin. So here, if I pick 2019, you can see that is the 19 that we saw. Here is giving us 7.67 as the net profit for the prior year. In this case, we are looking at 2018. So if you pick 2018, you can see that we are getting the same value here. So here, I want to provide my users with more opportunity to be able to look at more information rather than putting everything on the page. So here using a button, I have been able to give them two additional information. And then you can see that it's also having an icon here, which shows whether it's a positive change from that of the prior period or it's a negative change. So here if I pick 2019 and maybe pick quarter one, you can see that here we have an arrow indicating that it, this current here, that is 2019 quarter one, we actually had a fall in our net profit margin. And when they, are, they hover their mouse, they get the performance for the prior period. So it means that for the prior period, that's the 2019, um, 2018 quarter four, the net profit margin was 7.84. But currently we have 7.61%. And that's the more reason why we are seeing this downward trend. And when you hover your mouse, you also get this background color being red, showing that we actually had a negative effect or a negative change in our net profit margin. And we are doing all these things using a button. So I'm going to take you through how you'll be able to come up with something like this. So now let's move on to our demo section. So I'll share my Power BI desktop. So I'm going to show you how you'll be able to keep this. So the first thing that we are going to do is to look at the page navigation. So with the page navigation. So the page navigation is straightforward, okay? So here I want to give my users a button where when they click on the button, it can direct them to any of the pages that I'm having here. So to do this, you just go to insert. And then you go to the button. And here you have so many of the options here. You can have a bookmark button. You can have a Q&A. You can have, hello? OK. Yeah, hello. Screen, your Power BI screen is no longer showing. <laughs> it's no longer showing, OK. If you don't want to um, OK. Oh, sorry. It's not showing. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, okay. 
Michael, can you confirm me if you can see it now? Not yet. Yes. yes. So. Okay, sure. Okay, thank you. So here we are going to look at how we can use it in page navigation, where we are giving our users the opportunity to navigate to the other pages in our report easily. Instead of using this default buttons here and clicking on it, we want the page navigation to be on the face so that they will be able to see those buttons and they can use it to navigate to the other part of our report. So here you just go to the whole, the, your tabs here, you go to insert, and then you go to button. And here you have so many options here. You can use the bookmark, you can use Q&A, information, back, reset, and other things. So here I'm going to pick a blank button. So here I have this button here. So I can actually drag it to maybe a proper direction or a place where I can use it. So maybe I want to place it here. So with this, I can resize it nicely here. Okay. So we are going to use it in page navigation. So as I mentioned, with the Power BI button, it has some states that you need to be aware of. So here, when you select it and you come to your visualizations, you'll be able to see some of the configurations that you can do to this button. So here, when you come to the button text, you can see that this is turned off. Okay, so you can turn it on and then you can click to expand it. So when you expand it, you see the state here. So by default, it's going to be at the default state. So this has to do with what should be on the button when nothing has been done. Okay, and when you click the drop down, you see the state that we have on hover, on press, and then this disabled. You'll be able to configure the test that should be shown on this. So with this on the def default state, I want the name of the page to be on that button. So here, maybe I want it to link it to the cash flow statement. So here I can type cash flow statement here. Okay, and then I'll just click outside. Then when you scroll down, you see that we have an option for action. So here I can turn it on. Now when you turn it on and then you expand it, when you come to the type, this is where we see the various actions that we can populate with our button. So we can actually apply a back option which will drive our users back to the report where they came from. Then you can also use a, book, a bookmark, okay, which is used to capture the state of your report. Then you can also assign a route through or a page navigation or Q&A and then web URL. So here, based on what we want to do, we want to look at page navigation, how our users can use it to navigate to the other parts of our report. So here, I will just pick page navigation. Then it will ask the destination, the destination. So when our users click on this button, What's, what is the destination page? So when you click on the drop down, all the pages that you have within the report will be populated for you. So here I want to drive my users to the cash flow statement. So I can click on this. And here you can also configure the two tip that should be shown when our users hover their mouse over the button. But here I'm going to leave it blank and then just click outside. So now I have this report here. So it means that when our users click on this report, it will direct them directly to the cash flow statement. So when you are within the Power BI desktop and you have configured it to a particular page or any of the actions, you need to hold down your control key and then click on it. But when you publish it on the web, on the Power BI service, your users can directly click on it and they'll be able to see the actions. So here I can hold down my control key and then press it. And this will lead me directly to my cash flow statement. And now you can see that it has brought me to the cash flow statement page. So with the page navigation is straightforward. You just insert the button, you go to the text, and then you go to the action, and you specify the destination file that should be shown when our users click on the button. Now, apart from that, there's also another way you can use the page navigation. Now, let's go to our balance sheet here. Okay. So here I have this page navigation to page here. So you can see from the other pages, I have a lot of the navigation pane. For example, if I come to my cash flow statement here, you can see that I have this page here, or I have this navigation pane, which is taking up some space, okay? But here it's not all that much. But sometimes you have so many pages that you want to drive your users to those pages. In that case, imagine maybe I have Imagine I have like 20 pages that I want to use it in my page navigation. It means that the whole space here 
it is going to be covered. But to be able to save space, we can also use conditional page navigation. OK, so if you go to the page navigation to page that I have here. Instead of displaying everything on the on the panel or on the navigation page, I have put all the pages into a slicer. So here, if our users want to look at maybe any part of the financial statement, they can just select it from the slicer and they'll be able to navigate that page conditionally. OK, so here, if our users want to see the income statement, they can just select the income statement and then they click on this button, hold down your control key, and it will lead me straight to the income statement. So this has brought me to the income statement. Okay, so if I go back to that report, if I go back to that report, if maybe they want to look at the balance sheet, they can just select the balance sheet from the slicer, and when they select it, they click on the button, it drives them directly to the page that they have selected from the slicer. So here, if maybe they want to look at the cash flow statement, they can select the cash flows. And then when you hover your mouse over the button here, it gives you the destination where this button is going to lead you. So here, when you hover your mouse over it, when you hover your mouse here, you can see that you are seeing the cash flow statement. Here, if our users pick maybe the original performance, they hover their mouse over the button here, they'll be able to see where this button is going to lead them. So when they hover their mouse here, my report is taking slow, slowly to, to move. So let me see. So when they hover their mouse, you see that you are seeing the original performance. So here it also gives them the destination where this report is going to lead them. So here when I hold down my control key and then I press it, it will lead me straight to the, the original performance sheet. OK, so I'm going to show you how you can also set up this conditional and then dynamic page navigation. So to be able to do this first, you need depend on the data model that you are working in. First, you need to get a table that is going to have all the names of the pages that you have. All the names of the pages. So here, imagine we don't have that in our data model. We can just go to the home tab and then you go to enter data. So here when you go to enter data, there are so many ways of doing it, but I prefer doing it this way. So you can use the index, which will give you the index number. And then you can give the financial statement or whatever page that you have. So this is going to be financial statement. I'm going to give it index one, two, three, and then four. And then the financial statement, I have income statement. And I have balance sheet. So these are the pages that I have within my report. Then I have my cash flows. And I have my regional performance page. So this is going to be my regional performance. Okay. And then you keep your table a name. So maybe I'll call this demo one because I already have that table name, that's a financial statement. So maybe I'll call this financial two. I'll call this financial two here. It seems I have an error with my spelling of the financial. So with this, then we can load it directly into the data model. Uh, now, depending on the, because of my data model, I have so many columns with the index there. So because of that, it's going to keep some automatic relationship. I have not turned that option down. So I'll go to back to my model view and then turn off these relationships. I don't want it. Uh, I need to turn it off. OK, so I'm going to delete these automatic relationships.
Okay, so now let's go back to the report view and then we can start doing that. So what we can do is to, let me come to the, the navigation tool here. Okay. Or maybe insert a new page. Let me get a new page instead. So here I can come up with a slicer and then I will populate it with the new table that I have inserted. So here I'm going to use the financial statements column here. So I'm going to use it in my thoughts. So now I have, sorry, I picked the wrong one. That's the financial statement too. So now I have these values here, okay? So now I want my users to be able to navigate to any of the page that they select from the slicer here. So the first thing I need to do is to insert a button. So to be able to do that, I'll go to insert and then pick a button. And then I'll drag the button here. And here, what I will do is to come up with a DAX or a measure, which is going to give me the value that our users have selected from the slicer. Okay, so I'll go to um, my model view, or the model, and then I go to new measure. So we are going to use just a simple measure here to be able to give us the financial statement that our users have selected from the slicer here. So here I'll give some spaces here. So here we are going to call it selected and here we are going to declare a variable here okay so we are going to declare a variable that is going to give us the index number of the financial statement or report that our users have selected from the slicer so here the variable we are going to call it selected selected report this would be equal to selected value so i'm going to use the dax expression selected value here to use selected value measure here or DAX expression here. And this is going to go into the financials statement table. And then it's going to give us the index. Okay, so I'm going to close this. And first tab to move to the next one. So we are going to bring in the return. So I'm sure you guys are aware of this, um, how we can declare variable within our DAX expression. So here we are going to use the switch, switch here. So what we are going to do is to look at the value that will be returned by the selected. Selected, it's wrongly spelled, but I'm going to use this, okay? So it's going to look at the selected or the value that will be returned by the selected expression here. So if the selected is equal to one, then you should show the income statement. So you make sure that whatever you are going to type here is exactly the same name as the page. Okay, so if you get the name wrongly spelled or different, it wouldn't work. So here is going to go to the income statement. Then if the selected value is two, then that will be the balance sheet. If the selected value is three, <coughs> then that will be the cash flow statement. 
cash flow. And if the selected value is equal to four, then it will be the regional regional performance. So you have to make sure the name is exactly the same as what you have on the page or as the page name. I have this. And then if our users have not selected anything, we want them to see the test, please select report from the slicer. So that would be the default value there if our users have not selected anything. Okay, so if it's one, it will show the income statement. If it's two, it will show the balance sheet. If it's three, it's going to show the cash flow statement. And if it's four, it's going to show the regional performance. And all these are the names of the pages that we have in our reports. So with this, I'm going to close it and then press enter. So here we have come up with the measure here, the selected report. So now what we need to do is to go to our, our button here and then we go to the action. So you are going to turn on the action and then click on this expand here so I'll be able to expand the action pane. Then with this, the type I'm going to pick page navigation. But with the destination, I'm not going to specify the destination. I want it to be dynamic based on the selection from the slicer here. So instead of specifying the destination, I'm going to use this conditional option here. And then I'm going to format it based on a fold value. Then based on the fold, I have to select the measure that I have created. I then confirm where I have that measure. Okay, it's within the analysis table. So I'll go to the analysis table. And then you see the selected measure here. So this is the selected reports. So I'll click OK. And then apart from that, with the text that should be shown on the on the button, I want it to also be based on the selected value from the slicer. So here I will go, I will turn on the button test and click on the pane to expand it. So here the button test, I want it to be dynamic. So I'll go to the same place and then pick the same measure that we created. So whatever that will be returned by the measure will be the test, will be the one that will be shown on the test. So here I'll pick the selected report and click OK. So now if you take a look at it, you see, you see that it's showing the income statement because here our users have selected income statements. If they pick cash flows and you check this, you can see that now it's showing the cash flows. If they pick balance sheets, now you can see that it's showing the balance sheet. So here if I hold down my control key and I click on it, it will lead me straight to the balance sheet page. OK, so this is how you can also come up with some dynamic page navigation using a button. So that's one of the things that you can also do with the with a button. Now let's look at another thing. So here, um, let me delete this button here. So here, our users are going to filter this report. Maybe they filter by maybe 2018, and then they also maybe filter by the quarters here. After doing all this filtering thing, they might want to go back to the original state or the default state of the report. Now, I don't want them to, for this report, we don't have a lot of slices. So you're not going to see the impact, but in the cases where you have a report with so many slices, after users interact with their slices and then they try to filter and do other thing, at some point they might want to go back to the original report or the original state. Now, instead of them trying to clear all the filters from all the slices, I want to provide them with a button where when they click, when they click on that button, it clears off all the filters and they'll be able to look at the default report. So here I have cleared or applied some filters on this quarter slicer and the one on the year. So with this, I have this button here. So when I hold down my control key and I click on this, it clears off all the filters that we have applied to this report. And now they can see the report in the original state. And that's what we also want to give our users. And I'm, I'm able to do this using a bookmark. So here we are going to look at the bookmark. So I, I hope you guys know about the bookmark. So bookmark is actually used to capture the state of your report, okay? So here what I want to do is, this report is in the original state. No filters have been applied. So I would want to capture the state so that whenever I want to move back to the same state, I'll be able to move back. 
So here what I will do is to make sure that all the filters are cleared off. And then what I will do is to go to my view tab. And then I can bring in or activate my bookmark pane. So I click on this and the bookmark pane will be activated. So what I will do is to capture the state, okay? So here within your bookmark pane, you just click on add. It's going to capture the state of your object, including your photos and everything here. So here, when I click add, it's going to activate this, and this is going to be bookmark four. So anytime I want to come back to the same state that I have captured here, I just click on this bookmark and it will be able to activate that state for me. So for example, here, if I filter this by maybe fourth quarter, And then maybe I pick 2019 here. Now I have this report here. Now if I click on this bookmark, it's going to clear off all the filters here. So here when I click on this bookmark, it's going to clear off all the filters and it's going to restore the data back to the original state. Okay, so this is the bookmark <laughs> activating it. This is the bookmark I'm activating from the bookmark pane. So now what we need to do is to assign this to a button. So this is one of the examples of a button. So when I select this, I will go to action, turn it on, and then from the options, I will just pick what bookmark from the action options here. And then from the drop down, I select the bookmark. So in this case, I'm going to pick bookmark four. So when you pick bookmark four, it means that any time that you click on this button, it's going to activate the bookmark four. And we know what it does. It's going to clear off all the filters and it will bring the data or the report back to the default state. Okay, so that's one way that you can also use Power BI buttons. Now let's look at other way that you can also use Power BI buttons. So if you take a look at this report here, based on the data underlining this report, you can look at the reports from a quarterly perspective, and then you can also look at it on annual perspective. So here I have these two buttons here. So when I click on the annual, it's going to click, uh, it's going to activate the annual for me. So now let me activate one of them. So here I have these buttons here. So if our users want to look at the balance sheet here in terms of the quarters, they can click on this quarter bookmark here and they'll be able to see the reports on quarterly basis. If they want to look at it on annual basis or by year, they click here and they'll be able to see everything by year. And if you take a look at it, you see that now everything has changed to the yearly or performance. They want to go back to the quarterly performance, they'll be able to do that. Now to be able to keep this report, um, when you come to the selection pane, I'll go to my selection pane, you can see that all these reports I have duplicate. One that has been configured to show the yearly performance and one that has been configured to show the quarterly performance. And then we can use the filter pane to hide and then unhide some part of the report so that when you capture it, it will be able to show you that particular report. So for example, let me um, show you how this works. So I will select this report here. So here, this is the report here. So you can see that when I'm at the quarterly performance, this report is, is shown. But when I pick year, keep your eye on this report. When I pick the year, this report is hidden. And now it's going to show you another report which has been configured to show the yearly report. And this is about bookmark, okay? So after doing everything, then you can also assign the bookmark to a button. That will give your users the opportunity to interact with your report. Now let me show you the last thing here. And this is the other thing that I showed you here, where we have a button that is able to show you multiple measures at different states. So here we have this button here, the net profit margin button here. So when this button is at the default state, it shows you the net profit margin for the current selection or the current period that our users have selected. Now when they hover their mouse, they also get a different measure. So here is showing one button is showing two measures at the same time. OK, and then you could also see that we also have an icon which has also been applied to this measure here. So we are going to see how we'll be able to keep this. So now let me insert a new page and then I will take you through everything from scratch. So the first thing that we need to do is to come to insert and then insert our button. So here I'll come here, insert a blank button. 
So I'm going to resize this here and place it here. So now when it comes to when you come to our income statement, <coughs> you see that we have this net profit margin measure together with the icon. OK, and the icon there is very dynamic, depending on whether it's a positive change from the prior period or whether it's a, a negative change. So you are going to see how we can configure this. So I'll come here and then when I come to my income statement. I'll come to my income calculations table. And then I have a measure here which is comparing this for me. So when I check the net profits sign here, let's look at the measure underlining this particular uh, metric here. So here we have a very simple measure. Let me try to zoom in. Uh, it's gone. So let me select the measure again, the net profits sign. So here we have a very simple measure here. So what this is doing is very simple. It's checking if the net profit margin for the current year or the current selection is greater than the net profit margin for last year. So I already have these measures in my data model. I have this one giving me the net profit margin for the prior period. And this is the net, net profit margin for the current period. That's our users have selected from the slicer. So it's going to compare the current net profit margin to the net profit margin for the prior period. Now, if the net profit margin for the current selection is greater than the net profit margin for the prior period, it's going to return this mark or check mark icon here. And this icon, if I use Windows 10, you'll be able to use just the Windows um, key and then the semicolon, you'll be able to activate the icon pane and you can use this one in your report. So if it's greater than that of the prior period, it should show this icon. But if it's not greater than that, then you should show this downward trend icon here. And that's what we have used. And then we came back to use it together with the net profit margin itself. Because when you look at the button, it shows the icon and then the percentage. We also have this measure here, that the net profit margin button here. So you can take note of the, the measures that we are using here. So here, if you take a look at this measure, it's using the, the results from the net profit sign, the symbol that is going to be returned by that measure, and we are combining it with the net profit margin. But one thing that you have to note is that when it comes to the button, you can't use a value. For example, if I use the net profit margin on it, it wouldn't work because if you take a look at what is here, it says the button test. So it can only work with a test. So to be able to show a measure on the button, you have to format it as a test. And one of the DAX expressions or formula that we can use to format value as a test is the format here. So this format here is taking the net profit percentage and is applying this number format. So as a user, you are going to see it as a value, but here we have configured it and we have formatted it as a test. So I'll be able to use it on this button here. So now I have these two measures here. So what I will do is to select this button here and then I will turn on the button test. When I expand it here, the test, instead of typing something, I'm not going to type anything. I'm going to use this conditional or the FX symbol here. And then I'm going to say that the button test is going to be based on a fold value. Now, what is the fold value? This is the net profit button measure that I showed you. So I'll come here and I'll look for the net profit button, this one, and then click OK. So now if you take a look at this button here, you can see that now it's showing this. So we just let me increase the size to maybe 40. Let's enter. And now you can see the value here. So here we have the symbol here together with the net profit margin. The next thing that we need to do is to configure it to show the net profit margin for the prior period. Now to be able to do this, we also need to get a measure that is going to return the net profit margin for the prior period. So we already have a measure, but we have to make sure that that measure is formatted as a test. And to be able to do that, we have to wrap it within the format DAX formula or function. So here I have my net profit margin for last year, the one that we are going to use on the button. And here, if you read the expression, we have just taken the net profit margin for last period. So here we created it using a time intelligence. So I'm sure you guys have already covered a session on how you can do time intelligence the same period last year or using the date add 
to be able to calculate whatever measure that you are looking at for the prior period. So we have it and then we have wrap it within the format function here to be able to format this as a test using this number format as a percentage. So now we need to do what we need to do is to configure the button to be able to show that when our users over their mouse over the button. Change it from the default state to on hover. So when our users hover their mouse over it, you see that by default it's showing the same measure. We are going to use this FX on the conditional formatting here. And this is also going to be based on a measure or a third value, which is the net profit margin last year. So here, net profit margin or percentage last year button. So the one that we are going to use, and I'll just click OK. So here, when you hover your mouse, you see what happens. When you click outside, you see, so when you hover your mouse, it gives you the 8.56, which is for the prior period. When you click outside in the default state, it shows you the net profit margin for the current period. And that's really powerful. When you hover your mouse, you get that. Now, the next thing that we need to do is to be able to format the background dynamically. Okay, so if it's a positive change, when you hover your mouse, we want it to show green background. That would connote that this is a positive change from the prior period. And then when it's negative, when you hover your mouse, you should see a red background. And that's what you are going to do here. Okay, so to be able to do that, we also need a measure that is going to enable you to format that dynamically. So here, when you come to <coughs> this side, we have the net profit margin background. So here I have a net profit back. Okay, so this is what you are going to use to format the background. And this is also very simple. What we are checking is if the net profit margin for the current period is greater than the net profit margin for the last period. If it's greater than that, show this positive one. But if it's less than that, show negative one. Okay, then what we need to do is to configure the button to be able to be formatted dynamically based on the result from this measure here. So I'll just select this measure. And then, as I mentioned to you, we have some formatting options that we can alternate it from the various states. So here I'll come to the fill and then turn on the fill. Then click on the drop down here. And then here with a color, instead of specifying the color here, I'm not going to specify the color. I'll use this FX because this is going to be dependent on the result from another measure. So here I'm going to pick it and change it to rules. I'm going to change it to rules. So we pick the rule and the rule is going to be based on the result of the measure that I showed you. The net profit margin back. So here when I come to my income, I have this net profit back, which will give me either positive one or negative one, depending on the change. So here I will pick this and I'll say that if the value is one, then format it, show this color. So we are going to use this green here and then I'll add a new rule. If it's equal to negative one, and show me this red color here and click OK. So now we configured it. Oh, sorry, we configured it at the default state. It should be at the hover state. So we are going to clear off this. OK, then we change it on hover. We want it to be applied when our users hover their mouse over the, the button. So here I'll click on the FX and then go back to that. So here I'll come to my income calculations and then pick the net profit back measure, which is going to return either one or negative one. So here, um, I have to pick rules. And then when it's one, you should show the green background and then add new rule. When it's equal to negative one, then you should show this red background here. So I'll just click OK. And now when you hover your mouse, when you hover your mouse, you get this green background because there's a positive change. But here you don't see the full color here because there's a level, some level of transparency here. So I'm going to remove all the transparency. So when you hover your mouse, you can see the green background because if you look at this symbol or the icon there, you can see that it shows that it's a positive change from the power period. So when you hover your mouse, you get it here. But the color of the measure here it's not standing out, so we want to format it with white. So what I will do is to go to the button test, and then on hover, I want the format to be white here. 
So when you hover your mouse over it, you see that now it's white. Okay. So that's how you can also configure this button to be able to show different measures at different times. So here, if I come up with a slicer, if I come up with a slicer, I'll go to my calendar table. So unfortunately, you guys are not familiar with the, the data I'm working with, but you can just follow me through with the demo. So here, let me format it as that, and maybe I'll add my year to have some hierarchy here. Okay, so if I go to 2019, and then I pick maybe quarter two, you see that it's showing a negative trend. But when you hover your mouse, it gives you the value for last year or the last period. And you can see that it's 9.84%, but currently it's 5.5. .5. And you can see the icon pointing downwards and the background is also formatted with red. This is very dynamic. And then through this button, you are able to provide more value to your users and your users are going to appreciate it. Okay, so that's how you can take your Power BI button to the next level. So there are so many things that you can use this to do. You can use it in two truths. You can also use it in web navigation, navigation where you can dyna dynamically change the link, which will direct your users to a particular web page. So I'm going to end here. And wow. then you have any other things you can also. Wow, wow. I've learned a lot from this. In fact, as you are doing it, I was thinking about reports that I'm doing for some clients, and I'm like, wow, I can do this there. <laughs> I just hope none oh, of them, okay. my clients are here before they start asking it. It's better <laughs> if, and they come like surprised, and they'll say, oh, Michael got this thing for Thomas. <laughs> or they start immediately, Michael, that stuff in Thomas session, and we needed to add it. It would be nicer if I just had it and they checked before they did it. But this is awesome. Wow, wow. Uh, so, anybody has any question? uh sorry that most of the times uh this session is closer to the evening so some people they maybe they've joined the i just noticed that evening sessions we do used to have people that stay almost trapped but we still have a lot more people watch the recording mm, okay okay so apologies that the number is not really very high. Well, no problem. The recordings are available, so you know your guys will be able to watch it. I can also direct my guys to also have access to them as well. Anybody has a question? Because I have questions, but I want to uh, get people to ask theirs first. Uh, hello. Hello. Yeah, Francis, sir, we can hear you. Okay, no, uh, I just want to see how you modeled the data. It's the data model. I want to see how you were able to link them together. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, okay, my screen is still on. So, this actually, uh, I hope you guys can see my screen. Yes, yes. Kind of confirm. Okay, so yes, this is actually yes. um, a financial statement from Netflix, okay, that I modeled or I developed this report on. So here, if you come to the model view, you can see we have so many tables here, which is helping me to model everything here. So these are the three main components of the financial statement, which are linked to the cash flow statement. Then I have the various templates that we, we also use it to make it work. So here, there are lots of things going on here. And I'm not sure because um, I have an online course on that, which goes even beyond eight hours. Yeah, so I'm not sure I'll be able to show you everything here, but um, to be able to model the financial statement, it's it requires some level of some some. Um, can you, you need to be okay, can, Michael? Can you share the link to your course so that uh, in fact okay, that those won't okay. Okay. Sure. the course because okay okay we are not because here uh, those, okay. Uh, you with the adverts and get people to be aware of the course. Okay, sure. I'll share the, the link. So here there are so many things actually going on and we have different measures that are helping you to put everything together. So here when I come to my income calculations, I have different measures here which is helping you to prepare this income 
statement. And there are so many things that I wouldn't be able to take you through everything. I wouldn't be able, because even the course itself goes beyond eight hours. So there are so many things going on. But within that course, I have taken my time to go through everything step by step with you. Then apart from that, I also have this file on our website where you can also purchase it. And then you'll be able to have access to all the DAX expressions here. So if you want to learn everything on your own, you'll be able to do that. So there are so many things. I wouldn't be able to take you through everything. But if you want to learn more and on how you can model financial statements, you can actually go to our website. So the website is firstman.io. So let me use the chat. So here you go to firstman.io and you'll be able to get access to the course, okay? It's not that expensive, we have discounted it, so you can get access to it, and then you'll be able to go through it. If you need the exercise files, we also have it on our store, where you can also purchase it, just for a small amount, and then you'll be able to learn a lot from it. Because, Charlie, this report has so many functionalities and so many interactions. So if you take a look at what I have here, let me show you this. So here, we see we have some um, tool tips and other things that are giving you says, so many opportunities to engage with your reports. So if you really want to learn more about how you'll be able to put this thing together, um, you can bet on this course. You are going to learn so much from this course, okay? So I would encourage you, if you really want to learn how you can model financial statements in Power BI, you can, you can look at this. I, it took me a long time to be able to come up with this, like more than a month. And I'm not sure I can teach that or within this few minutes, but if you really want to learn more, you can go to the website that I shared and you'll be able to access it, okay, including all the demo files and everything. Okay. Oh, thanks a lot. In fact, I'm on the website, so let me leave with the... Okay, so people won't be annoyed if I share my own screen and it cuts off your own. But the thing is... Okay. Uh, if thanks. But it's 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 something that if you, you should try and ah, great you can help us launch it from yours so that uh, they will see the website too. Uh, I thought you wanted to go to it on your screen. It's no longer showing. Yeah, I'm coming. Um, okay. Uh, any other questions? Why you do that? Why? I hope you have a, maybe like 50 more minutes for. Because my own questions normally might be asked. What do you have to say more, like 15 minutes more for us? So here you can see there's a um, financial reporting here, financial modeling and analytics using Power BI. So you can see the cost here. So, so far we have like 32 students who have enrolled and there's the amount in cities. So I'm sure, I don't know if Michael can help them to convert it. But so when you come here and you come to courses, I hope you guys can see my screen. Yes. Yes. Okay. So when you come to courses, you'll be able to see the cost here. So when you click on it, you'll be able to take a look at how you'll be able to build this from scratch. And it goes beyond eight hours. Okay. So this is the demo video that you can see. And then when you go to color column, you'll be able to see everything, connecting and cleaning the financial reports, data modeling and DAX. So here we generated auto calendar here. We also have how to model the income statement. You come to time intelligence calculations, how you can do year over year, quarter on quarter, how you can do vertical analysis, and then putting everything together into one measure here. And then we come to the dashboard and report and how you can put this report together. We also do the point analysis, how we can break our return on equity. We also do ratio analysis and other things. Then I also cover some sections on how you can use smart narratives, tool tip, buttons, drill tools, and then page navigations as well. So when you come here, you'll be able to have access to the course. And I am not, I'm even not done with all the recordings. I have the recordings up to this point. So I'm still working on other things, how you'll be able to publish and share this report with others. And there are so many things that you can get from this report. So I'm going to copy the exact page and I'm going to share it with you if you want to go to the page directly. It's a lot of work I'm seeing there. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. Uh, anybody has any other question? I was asking that, do you have like 15 more minutes? I know we are done exactly the one hour we told you, but do you have like extra time for us? Okay, sure, sure, no problem, Mike. Okay. Uh, thanks. Okay. Uh, and by the way, I I think you guys have more design uh, flair, more design taste than, because even like, uh, my Oga Bernard is also here. I notice everything he does looks really, really very bet, uh, better than what me I, and most of my own people here, what we do sometimes. So uh, I don't know, is there a particular design gene in Ghanaians? Do you guys just naturally <laughs> take the design? Uh, so, uh, maybe that's how you guys, you know, we, we, we say that we have jollof rice better than you. Maybe I have better than that. <laughs> But well, it's really amazing. Like even when I see what Bernard does, it's always eye popping graphics on point. I'm seeing what you're doing to also design on point. You know, maybe I'll just come and spend some months in Ghana. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so I say this jealous right. <laughs> so uh, now we have come to the session where we want to know your your own experience. So, you know, how did you get into all of these data analysis, Power BI, you know, everything that relates to Excel, Power BI analysis. Is it that maybe you were born with all these skills or you started at the age of four? Or, you know, what's your unique story? Okay, uh, <clears throat> so let me touch on the, on the reporting, like the graphics and those things. You know, um, as a data analyst or a financial modeler or anything, you see, when you are doing your work, you do your, like, within Power BI as an example, connecting to the data, you do your data modeling, your DAX and calculations. Your users at the other end doesn't know what goes on within your report. The only thing the users go to see is the final report or your artifact or your dashboard. So you have to make it very nice for them. They don't know the work. We don't care about what you put into producing the report. The only thing that we care about is what you are seeing. That's the end product that we are getting. So it's just like coming up with a product onto the market. Your users doesn't know how long it took you to produce that product or the process that you went through to produce the product. The only time you get to engage with you is when you are consuming your products. The same way with your dashboard. The only time you get to see what somebody has done behind the scenes is when they see the report. So I spend much time with my reporting on my dashboard. So I have to make sure I put time into it, make sure that it's on point, uh, my users are getting the story that I want to tell. Because if you invest your time in developing those reports, and at the end the reports look confusing, your users are not able to take actions based on the report, then you have wasted your time. So I have to put time into the report to make sure that it's very easy for your audience to understand. And when they see the report, it looks engaging and attractive. So that's how I come up with those reports. I spend much time working on my visuals. I spend much time there as compared to what I do in my data modeling and those kind of things. I spend my time on that. Okay. Yeah. Now on my on my yeah. Power BI journey and Excel journey, it all started when I was on campus, and that was in this of Cape Coast, Ghana. So um, when I went to level hundred, <clears throat> but before then, in essence, we have been exposed to Excel and then those things, but we know Excel, we use it for just some multiplications and some additions. So now I get to level 100, um, I get to attend one Excel masterclass, and that class opened my mind to what Excel can do. And from that moment, I told myself, no matter how it takes, I have to master this application. Then from there, I started learning more about it, and that was back in 2013. So in the course of my learning, then I discovered Power BI when it was first introduced. So by then I was still a student at the University of Cape Coast. Then I realized that um, my student, my colleagues, we had some external or resource persons who come outside to come and teach us about these things. And I said, okay, why don't we get something like this among ourselves so that we can learn from our fellow students? So I started teaching the Excel on campus. So because I was teaching and training other people, that's the more reason why I stood on top of the application. Because I remember I attended the class with my other colleagues, and right now I even teach some of them. Because for them, they were not able to do these trainings to be able to make sure that they have those skills on their fingertips. So I started learning more about um, um, Power BI when it was first introduced. So one, once I was on campus, I was also teaching other students. Then after school, I was still on it, and then it became a consulting thing that I do, where I do training for other people. 
Now, through that experience, I've been able to learn so many applications. So to me, Excel knowledge is not just a technical skill. When you know how to use Excel, there's no software or no application that you really wouldn't be able to learn it, even on your own. With just Excel knowledge, you'll be able to learn so many things. And the Excel knowledge has really improved my other soft skills, like critical thinking, problem solving. Because right now, when I'm confronted with a problem, I stood up on my feet and make sure that I think through it. It's the same with Excel when you are working, as you know, maybe VBA or any of them, sometimes you are trying to do things and then because that the thing is not working, you have to make sure you fix it before you move on. It's the same experience that it has helped me in life as well. And when I'm, I encounter problems, I'm able to think it through and then solve problems with it. So currently at where I'm working, everyone knows me, not because I'm a chartered accountant or not because I do other things, just because I know how to use Excel. So when you know how to use Excel, it can take you to a lot of places. There's no software or application that you wouldn't be able to learn. So to me, all the trainings that I do, I start with them using Excel. If you want to learn Python, if you want to learn R, I would encourage you to start from Excel. Because when you have the Excel background, you can learn virtually every application, even if no one is guiding you or no one is teaching you. Because Excel goes beyond the technical skill. It improves your communication skills, your problem solving, your critical thinking. Because when you are writing your formula, even writing a formula, you know that you have to write the formula such a way that even if you are not there, somebody can read the formula and understand what you are trying to put across. So to me, Excel goes beyond a technical knowledge. It goes beyond that. So that's how my journey started. It all started when I was a, a, a student. I attended one of the trainings and I fall in love with Excel and I have learned so much along the line. Wow, wow, amazing. Uh, so if one has a question, I can... Okay, uh, Francis is asking a question. Uh, Francis, should I read it or do you want to read it? Do you want to say it out, like maybe on mute? Oh, okay. Uh, so my question is that, so as a financial analyst or an accountant, so how do you use Python in your daily activities? And is it relevant for an accountant to learn Python? Okay. Wow. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, sure. Python, Python has a lot of applications in finance. And it depends on the role that you play as a financial analyst. For me, where I'm working currently, I don't really use Python. But actually, you can use Python as maybe for automation. So you go to some, as a financial analyst, you may be even doubling as a data analyst. From where I'm working, I'm also doubling as a data analyst. So we get some data being spooled from for us. Then we have to clean the data, we have to transform it and other things. And to be able to automate it, apart from using Excel VB or Power Query, if you know how to use Python, you can use it to automate all these cleaning processes. And apart from that, some other companies, I know some, they use it in stock market analysis. So Python is really powerful. It has a lot of application in finance. I know there is a course on Coursera on um, um, asset management using Python. So you can take notice of that. You can go and check it out, and then you can see asset management using um, Python. So Python has a lot of application in finance. And I know some companies that they keep in accounting. Yeah, yeah, the accounting the same way. You may you may be doing analysis. You may be getting some data. You need to clean it. You may even be automating some of your accounting processes. For example, before you be you come out to your final account like trial balance and other things, you can see that the process of getting the data and cleaning it is repetitive. It's the same thing. You can use Python to automate all these kind of things. So even your financial reports or maybe your end of month or end of year reports, you can automate them using Python. And if you want to also do maybe dashboard for management, you want to make presentation, you can use Excel, like the raw numbers. Maybe you want to do a dashboard. You may even decide to use Python to do your dashboard as well. So there are a lot of applications, whether you're an accountant or a finance guy, especially when it comes to automation. And we know that this is one of the things that is transforming the accounting and the finance industry, or automation, business process automation. Because right now we don't have a lot of things on our hands. The time is limited. So as an accountant, we need to focus our attention on the high level analysis that we need to do. So those kind of tasks that you know that you can automate it, you can use Python to automate it, whilst you focus on the relevant aspect of your work. So you can actually use it in accounting as well. Wow. Uh, so let me just chip in another of my, I'm watching the time you've given us, so let me see how many more I can sneak in. Uh, the one is, hmm, 
I want to ask because I'm even looking at this your course platform. <laughs> okay. I don't know any other African. If I home and abroad, let me not even say just in Africa. Home and abroad, who has done this amount of because the courses are not direct. So I can see Python. I can see there's this one on the Power BI you've done. I saw some other ones, and I'm looking at you. Have a how do you where do you get the time from? Like you know. Even I work full time on, on, on this and I know how draining it is to create six hours, four hours course. And then imagine you doing this not on not on something that maybe has been how old is Power BI? Power BI is just five years. Almost every one of us who know how to use it is just in the span of none of us is has been using it for more than more than yeah, yeah. That, that number of years. Five, I think me six because I was using it in Excel, but still. I want to say that, you know, learning it, mastering it, and then having time to create a training as something like this one you've shown, you know, where do you get the time from? How was your time really interested in that? <laughs> My dear. so you know, it's, it's, not, it's not easy, especially around this time. And then it's not easy combining these things with full time. It's not easy, especially when you are working at the capital Accra. Bernard would agree with me, traffic and other thing. After closing from work around 7 or 6.30, even before you get home, you're already tired. But you know, we have that passion to always share our knowledge and also help others along the journey. So no matter how it takes, we try to make some sacrifices. So sometimes you have to spend some sleepless nights trying to put all these things together. Uh -huh. So one thing is on weekends, um, most often I'm free on weekends. So I use that time to try to do all those things. And then after work, maybe one hour, I also spend that time to also sit down and maybe learn or either try to create a video which I can share with others. So the key thing is about the passion. You're always passionate about sharing your knowledge. No, no matter how it takes, you try to put it across. Yeah, so it has been very difficult. It has been challenging. But because of the passion that we have, we try to, we try to make some progress. So I'm sure with time, we'll be able to overcome all these things. So it's all about the passion, and then we try to manage the time as well, so we'll be able to do what we love doing. Yeah. Okay. So uh, there's someone in our in the in the there's one of us here. So I want to yeah. ask her permission. Uh, so she okay. she has some of this experience, you know, kind okay. of like she has banking experience and all. And so I'm thinking that maybe it would be a good opportunity to get get your kind of uh, perspective. So the thing is, she wants to switch to data analysis. Let's say she wants to be able to do all of what you're doing now, this data analysis. And on a level that, you know, you as you have proof of work, as you have now that, if you're going to be applying for a job in a new place, say you switch location, you know, there's a proof of work that you have built. So it's not just you're showing them, I, I, I have a certificate or, just saying it with mouth, you're able to show with proof of work, right? So my question is for someone who wants to start out, right? You know, what is your advice on how to first of all even learn this thing to this very deep level that you now can able to create learning content or even create templates or create things for people, not even waiting for people to give you projects, or you creating stuff that can be useful for others. And hopefully that opens doors to projects and hopefully that opens doors to career opportunities and a lot more other things. But, you know, if you're going to give an advice, how would you say someone starting out to join you? OK, so the first thing I will talk about is the passion. Always have that passion to learn more. That's the key. Because if you are not passionate, the journey is not going to be all that smooth. At some point, you may be learning something. You can see that you, you are not really understanding it. So if you have that passion to learn, you always learn. I remember when I was on campus, I sometimes skip lectures to attend trainings on Excel. Wow. I remember one of the certifications that I did when I, I first did my Microsoft Office Specialist. That time we were having a lecture. I have to skip that lecture to go to the exams room at one of the Pearson's um, um, registered centers to go and write the exam. Wow. Because of that passion that I have. Sometimes, you know, you have quizzes, you have to attend lectures, but still you have to learn Excel. So I was doing it alongside because I know the value that I'm getting from Excel. So the whole thing is have that passion, know yourself. 
that okay this is something that you can really work with i know some people who actually start and then along the line they give up so the only thing is find your passion to see if actually you, you want to go into that and when you, you have confirmed that you want to go into that then you can get started now we are fortunate we have so many resources that we can use to start but one this one other thing that comes with those abundance of resources that we have is that sometimes we may lose focus at one point in time i got signed up to some online courses and other things. I'll take the course and I realize I'm not able to complete them. So I have so many resources at my disposal that I try to learn everything at once. I want to learn this, learn this. Whilst I'm not completed with the other ones, I try to learn. And at one point I sit down and I realize that I'm not making any progress. So one other thing that you need to do is to stay focused on what you want to learn. So if you want to start, I would advise start with Excel. Then try to make sure you have mastered the Excel language itself then you can move on to the other ones that are coming in python r and then power bi or maybe tableau so one thing is have a passion and make sure you stay focused and try to also learn from those who are expert in it i remember back then i used to watch your video even currently i watch oh serious like i watch your videos on data modeling power bi on youtube as well i follow bernard on linkedin so when i went to i came to linkedin i see bernard doing a lot of i've been watching a lot of his videos i follow a lot of guys who are not even in africa and I learn from them. I also invest my money in online courses. And that's where I spend most of my money. Is. I do online courses a lot, especially when I was on campus. I have to move from lecture because I realized some of the things that are being taught in the lecture theater is not something that I really want to do. So sometimes I have to move to our ICT center just to go and take an online course. Because when I, when I was on campus, internet wasn't or that is very expensive, so I have to skip lectures and go to ICT center to go and learn those things. So you have to make sure you invest in quality online resources. And then though you can go to YouTube to learn, but you can see that LinkedIn, the, um, YouTube doesn't provide a structured way of learning. Maybe something short, you can go and improve. But when you are starting, if you rely on YouTube alone, you might get discouraged because you learn at some point and you realize you don't even know where the person is starting from. But when you get a structured online course, it's going to help you in your journey and you'll be able to learn more. So try to follow those people who have experience. When there's any power, um, Microsoft sponsored programs attend, maybe webinars like what you are doing, you also have to participate. In that case, you tend to engage with the, with the trainers so you can ask questions that will be able to clarify for you. So I would encourage you to invest your time, stay focused and make sure you have that passion to start the journey. And when you get stuck, don't also forget to ask for help. So that, that these are the things I will share with you. Wow, wow. Another thing I also want to ask uh, ask you to talk about is uh, so I I in fact from all what you've been saying, you know, I'm also beginning to take some motivation. So I want to ask you, uh, for you, a couple of people here, they are accountant, they are in the banking space, and so for you, what's like the next phase? What's like you know? If you are looking at your learning plan and you know, plan into the future, what what what's your you've already backed Excel? Excel is in the bank for you. Power BI is there already too. So what are the other things like what like for you? You have to wrap with the promised land that you are joining to. <laughs> okay, so uh, <clears throat> I'm looking I'm looking at becoming a data scientist along the line. That's my focus. To, to move into data scientists. And you know, um, data science and data analytics is not just for those who are in the field of data science and data analytics. This is having impact on almost or across every industry. So whether you're an accountant, you're a finance guy, or whatever you are, at one point in time, you need to have these, these skills. Because what drives the business? What drives the business right now is the data. If I'm able to analyze that data to make the data to make uh, to be able to get some insight that management can rely on to make informed decisions, it's all about the data. So where I am currently working, though I'm a finance guy, but I don't do core finance things. I do data analytics, dashboarding, and those kind of things. So I really want to be in a position where I'll be able to master data science, where I'll be able to use data to help management to make informed decisions. Another thing I want to do, as you. Since you have a question relating to accounting and finance, one thing I'm also looking at is um, um, RPH, that's Robotic Process Engineering Automation. I'm also looking at, because this time we don't have that time. So all those things that we manually do, that take most of our time as finance or accounting guys, we have to find a way we can automate them. 
And now we have so many tools that can help you to do that, like Power Automate is there, automation everywhere, and then we also have these applications that you can learn. So in the end, my focus is to look at data science, how I can use data to help companies make data-driven decisions. And I'm also looking at how I can also minimize my time that I spend in creating reports by looking at how we can automate our business processes. So these are the long-term goal that I'm having currently. Okay, so my next question is very short. So what are you doing that we can that you are doing to achieve it? You know, maybe I get my books too, so I can. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> oh, Michael, you you know the the resource. So we have so many other online platforms now because of um, the situation that we are in. Most of the resources or the next way that we can learn more is using or utilizing online platforms. And now because of these things, we know we have so many platforms that are available, but you just have to make sure you pick the right online platforms to be able to learn. So I'm, I'm looking at investing more in online courses to learn more. The only thing that we are limited by is the time, because as we are teaching others, you also have to get some time to also learn and then improve your skills. These times are not easy to come by. Uh -huh. So that, that's the challenge there. But I'm looking at how I can invest my time in more online resources and then other Microsoft communities where I can learn this these stuff. I know I have um, Samuel and other guys in Ghana who are into the Power Apps and the Power Automate. So I also tend to learn from these guys as well. Okay. So uh, I don't know if anybody has any question for him uh, before I do the last question around wrap up. Anybody? Uh, maybe mine is not a question, but just to help others who are just who want to enter data analytics. Because, for example, someone like me, I, I never like programming. Okay, so someone now asks, so do I have to learn Python and all these things? Maybe I'm in HR or an accountant, and most of these things are not tech. Okay, so the easiest thing to do is ask yourself. In my own field, how can I apply them? So if you're in HR, how can I apply Python in HR or Power BI in HR? I think that should be the starting point. So you know your objective of what you want to achieve at the end of the day. Because learning everything and you can't apply it, then there's no use for it. So I think the easiest way is just to understand in my own field, how do I how do they apply this particular tool? Because if you need to understand the whole pipeline from extracting the data, so if I need to extract the data in my own organization, where is that data sitting? If it's in the database, then how do I get that database? Then I need to learn SQL. Okay, so that is how as HR or accountant or whatever field, I now know, okay, SQL is important in getting that particular data for what I want to achieve. Then the next thing, when I get the data, what do I do with this data? I need to clean this data, analyze the data. So sometimes you now ask yourself, which tool can I use to do that? So sometimes you can have your Power Query, your Excel, your R, okay? So you can clean, transform the data in a form ready for analysis, okay? And at the end of the day, am I doing any machine learning or basic visualization? If it's visualization, then I can use my Tableau or my Power BI or whatever visualization tool, even your Excel, okay? But as he said, actually start with Excel and sometimes end with Excel. So start with Excel, yes, but still, Excel has its own limitation, but that's where you now have other tools that are now coming. So at the end of the day, you now have to now learn, okay, how do I now deploy or consume it? So that's what you're now talking about, the Power BI service or whatever platform you want to use to deploy. So that's just a quick pipeline of how to learn it. Thank you for that. Uh, I need to make an make an honorable mention. My Oga Bernard, I think I can see you are here. Is there <laughs> you want to see? So, uh, you want to say anything before I? It's okay. Okay. All right then. So, uh, Mr. Thomas, just the um, the last thing that wraps up the session with me. So your career, right? If you look at it, uh, what has been something that happened that kind of like was very, it's, if you look at all the years that you have been in this, your passion and all of them, right? What stood out the most? You know, what event, what singular thing?
stood out for you, maybe on the positive side or on the negative side, you know, that uh, that memory will always, like, always uh, be there for you, with you for life, like something that happened that really, really maybe catapulted you or changed your orientation or something that, you know, something just unique, something different from every other thing that you've encountered. It could be meeting someone, it could be, you know, something, an event, it could be you know, anything, but something that really stood out for you all these years that's been you know, <laughs> Um okay. <clears throat> so um what I will say is this like um I started my journey as an investment banker. So I was working with one of the leading investment firms in Ghana. But the road I was actually in, I was doing sales where I tend to meet clients and other things. But before then, I'm very good with those kind of things. And that's what I really want to want to do, like data analytics and financial modeling and those kind of things. But the road I was in was really <coughs> giving me that exposure to be able to put those things into practice. But one thing that stood out for me was that at that point in time, I, ne I never gave up. That, OK, that's where I find myself. So I'm going to give up on my dream. Alongside, I was still learning these things, even though I know they are not relevant in my current role. But that's something I really want to do. So I kept on learning and learning. And you know what happened? There was one guy on LinkedIn who happened to work with where I'm working currently, the same department, the same office. So one time I reached out to him on LinkedIn and I told him oh, I really want to work with where like the company that he's working with. And I really want to work with the finance team. Then said, OK, no problem. You forward your CV to me. Then I sent my CV to him. Now you know what my CV will look like <laughs> with <laughs> data analytics, um, VBA, financial modeling, those kind of things. Now, not knowing at that point in time, they actually needed someone with the same skill set. Wow. So when I sent the CV to him, he looked at the CV and he told me he's going to get back to me. So it took like a month then he called me that, like, okay, his boss or his team want to meet me. So I went to meet the team. And you know, if you really know your craft, you know the value that you provide, wherever that you go, that confidence is actually in you. Because I know personally that with finance team or with finance role, you just need financial modeling. You need, you need, you need to know how to use Excel. These are the key things you actually need. So when I go, I don't know what you can ask me that because I have the 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 experience, I have the exposure, I have everything to be able to back the kind of skills that I have. So I went to meet the team. And from the conversation that I had, it seems the only challenge with the team was look, looking at how they can do more, more data analytics and how they can automate their business processes. So I connected with them and they are really passionate about the things that I do. I shared with them, I shared with them the things that I do and other things. And I went to meet the boss. So when I went to meet the boss, then he, he asked me, the first question that he asked me is this, do you know how to do a dashboard? <laughs> and I said, wow. So by then I have already developed one dashboard that I shared on LinkedIn. So I didn't respond, I just opened my phone, but then I have published it on the web. And I was also having a PDF format of that dashboard on my phone. So I just showed that to him. Then looked at it and said, wow. But you know what? Yeah. At that point in time, they had connected one of the big four. I think it's KPMG. They promised to do a dashboard for them, but they were taking them around like um, 1,000 or 10,000 Ghana cities to be able to develop the dashboard for them. Oh. And said, wow. So you did this. And I said, yes, I did it. I said, okay, no problem. Then I left. <laughs> the, the HR invited me for the next training, uh, the next set of interviews. So when I went to the HR manager, the first question that he asked me is this, do you know how to use Excel? <laughs> <laughs> then we just said that, then I laughed and said, Excel, you wait, wait for me. So I just showed him some of the things I've been able to build using Excel. I said, wow, then we are going to work together. So even at that moment, I got that feeling that yes, I have been employed. Yeah. And the response my, my boss was this, when you come in, your first project will, will be to build a dashboard. So from that moment, I got that feeling that yes, they have already picked me. And that is the defining moment for me in this year. That was a defining moment for me. So my advice is this, no matter where you find yourself, you already have your passion. If you're already in the field that you want to work in, 
fine. But if you are looking at working in other places, whilst you are still working in your current company, look at the ways you can upgrade and acquire the skills that you need to progress to your next level. Then no matter how it how long it takes, definitely the opportunity will come one day. Yeah. Nice one. Yeah, finally, Akabenad is hands up. Yes, sir, <laughs> for you. <laughs> Hi, Michael. Good evening. First of all, good evening. <laughs> good evening, Michael. Uh, Bernard. <laughs> so I have to get out. I'm in a very noisy background, but as I said earlier, this has been a wonderful session. Yeah. You are doing very well. Keep going. And thank you, Michael, for putting this together. Okay, thank you, Bernard. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Wow, wow. Thanks a lot. Too. So uh it's been very nice having you and thank you to everybody who stayed to the end some people who started joining towards the end i think they are enjoying your story and uh your journeys even i've taken a lot of motivation from yours oh, wow facts i'm going to be energized for next year like you guys are <laughs> <next year>. thank <laughs> you so thank you very much and uh, to everybody have a nice week ahead happy christmas or merry christmas ahead you know compliments of the season and thomas we really really enjoyed today's session it's been thank you bernard um thank you michael thank you questions yeah thank you thank you very much thank you everybody and have a nice week ahead